Heavenly Father, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that the things that are in your heart come forth clearly and understandably and it, it be light and victory in the heart of, and understanding of for many people and that you have your will and your way in this um, well and excellency in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. This next topic, he had me break the return of the Lord down into some specific topics. This next topic is about all things becoming subject to his sovereignty or, or the everything in the earth being subject to the, the Lord's sovereignty and, and becoming subject through, through his name, um, the bride of Christ, the church. We bring heaven and the will of God on earth as it is in heaven through the power that's in the name of Jesus. The church takes dominion in that, and I'll be getting into that. We're going to dip into some Old Testament scriptures first and work our way into the New Testament with this. So here we go. <clears throat> the first one, this would be First Chronicles 29, verses 11 through 13, I think is what I have mar marked. You, O Lord, is the greatness of the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Indeed, everything that is in the heavens and the earth, it is, your dom it is the dominion of the Lord, and you exalt yourself as head over all of it. Both riches and honor come from you. You rule over all, and in your hand is the power and might. It lies in the hand, in your hand, to make great and to strengthen everyone. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. That kind of says it all. I mean, God's in charge. You know, we hear people say God's in charge, but it's important to have these scriptural references and know the word of God to know that it's over everything. It's over every area and aspect of, of life on, on planet Earth. Okay, next one. This is Psalm 2, and the Lord just kept saying, speak the whole thing. And this is a good one because this is a, a prophecy. David was prophesying all the time a lot of Old Testament scripture and, and stuff is very prophetic, and this is a very prophetic uh, psalm that's happening now. Okay, why are the nations in an uproar and the people devising a vain thing? Vanity is life without God. It's man's own way. That's just a, a good way of looking at the vanity of life that Solomon talked about all the time. It's just man going his own way without God. Um. Let me repeat that. Why are the nations in an uproar and the peoples devising a vain thing? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us tear their fetters apart and cast away their cords from us. That would be the laws of God. You know, they don't want anything to tell them that they can't lie, steal, cheat, kill, do whatever they want. They want to. They don't want the restrictions of that accountability anymore. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he will speak to them in his anger and terrify them in his fury. But as for me, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. I will surely tell the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will surely give you the nations as your inheritance, and the very ends of the earth as your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. Now, I've, I've seen the Lord snap rods over his knee, and God can snap the rod of a rule, a ruler, very quickly. We, you know, when you're following him in the spirit and praying what he wants you to pray. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall shatter them like earthenware. Now, therefore, O kings, show discernment. Take warning, O judges of the earth. Worship the Lord with reverence and rejoice with trembling. Do homage to the Son, lest he become angry and you perish in the way. For his wrath may soon be kindled. How blessed are all who take refuge in him. I'm going to dip into some more. This one's Isaiah 40, verses 22 through 25. It's beautiful. 
He, it is he who sits above the vault of the earth and its inhabitants are like grass hoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He, uh, he is, he it is who reduces rulers to nothing, who makes the judges of the earth meaningless. Scarcely have they been planted. Scarcely have they been sown. Scarcely has their stock taken root in the earth but he merely blows on them and they wither and the storm carries them away like stubble. To whom then will you liken me that I should be his equal, says the Holy One. I'm going to go to Isaiah 45, verses 22 through 25. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone, for, gone forth from my mouth in righteousness and will not turn back, that to me every knee will bow and every tongue will swear allegiance. They will say of me, only in the Lord are righteousness and strength. Men will come to him, and all who were angry at him shall be put to shame. In the Lord shall all the offspring of Israel be justified and will glory. Now, I'm going to start, I'm going to go to Isaiah 61, and then we're going to get into the New Testament scriptures. And this is a good kickoff point for where God wants me to go with this, because it's, the, it's about the dominion we have in Christ as the body of believers, which is really important because we take ground. We take the nations. They're his inheritance. Ask for the nations and he will give them to you. We have this wonderful um, relationship with the Lord where you have conversation with him. When you're praying with him, you have conversations. You're asking questions. He's answering, but he's telling you what his will is, and you're asking him what his will is because you're subject to him. He's the king. And um, thy will be done, and thy, um, you know, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, we're going to go into Isaiah 61 and... Page over. This is verse one through four. This is how Jesus started his ministry because he's introducing the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven um, that would come through the Messiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them garland, uh, a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified, then they will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will raise up the former devastations. They will repair the ruined cities and the desolations of many generations. This is the work of Christ. But through his name and the dominion that he brings forth through the body of Christ, we do this. We do these things. And when you get your focus on the kingdom and on following the Lord, you will learn that how to rule and have dominion in him it through being subject to him by following him. My sheep know my voice and they follow me. They hear my voice and follow me. And, and it's the obedience of Christ and following him and having dominion over the earth. Now I'm going to get into the New Testament scriptures. Um, let's see. Let me, I'm going to back step and go into Ephesians. First I'll do... The one in Colossians, this is just beautiful. This would be Colossians 1, 15 through 18. Colossians chapter 1, 15 through 18. And he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. This is talking about Christ. For by him, all things are created, both in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things are have been created by him and for him and he is and he is before all things and in him all things hold together 
He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself might come to have first place in everything. This is, again, about this dominion. Beautiful. Okay, let me hit on Philippians. This is Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Um, Therefore God has exalted him, it's talking about Jesus, and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Good. Now I'm going to get into the ones in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. And I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe these are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this day, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Now, I'm going to dip into the last one, and this one's really important to get. This is Ephesians chapter 3, um, verse 8 through 11. Um, now, to me, the least of all the saints, Paul's talking about himself. This grace has been given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery, which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things in order that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, we have a dominion in Christ that's very powerful. And when you start walking, with, when the, first of all, when the church comes together, you bring a room full of four or five Christians and they subject themselves to the head, which is Christ, he will introduce through the prayer, everybody's subject to the Lord, they're praying and they're listening to the Lord, he will introduce an area of the world a region, a city, or something that is in his heart for the church to be in prayer about and take dominion over. And he will show the, show the body of believers, you know, the church, his bride, these people assembled in your, in your prayer meeting, these people assembled when they're all yielded and bowed to the head, which is Christ, and praying and humble and in supplication before the Lord, he will show them what they need to be praying about. It may be a, a community or a city or a university. I mean, God will bring up all kinds of amazing subject matter. Usually, it's, with me, it's nations, often. And um, we just, we'll all be hearing the same information and moving in the Spirit of the Lord because like fingers or like the heads and feet and part of, parts of the body, members of the body, the Lord's the head, and we're all connected to the head because we're subject to the head and we receive the impulses coming from the Lord, the brain, to move in one accord. So we're all connected and moving in one accord and we all pick up on information that all co coincides. It all comes together in him, the subject matter of where we go in him. And then he, has, he takes dominion and, and he could have you pray specific prayers over a country uh, sometimes the church is to pray prayers of forgiveness over a country. It's amazing. But when God is having the church do that, the bride of Christ is his people do those things. 
He is lifting off the these terrible sins and forgiving a nation so that he can do what? Move. There's movement of God. Um, it is just amazing how God has dominion. Now, I'm, I'm going to give just one little bitty example. Um, God had me do... Um, and this is this is a small thing. The dominion of the Lord when you've got a body of believers together praying, and God has us praying over a specific, uh, over the earth itself or over a specific region, and you start praying the things that He shows you in the Word. He'll give you the Word, which is the sword of the Spirit. There's power. That's your aggressive weapon that you're using to take dominion over. Um, you you start praying and together and you, he'll give you a specific word you start speaking that word and praying that word and praying in tongues over that word to be released over that nation or that area or over the earth itself you will see the angels of heaven going forth you will see heavenly visions of movement as god is in coordination between the heavenly army above the angels and the earthly army below, which is the bride of Christ. It is awesome. Now, this little bitty story I had, um, I was called by God to do a ministry in my city. And what went in hand with that was to minister to the homeless, to take a little bit of food down there and minister to the homeless in bags, take only what we could carry. We would take peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on whole wheat bread and bananas because they're healthy. Um, we would we would hand those out and pray and move in the spirit of God and do what he was showing us to do and signs and wonders followed. It was awesome because when you're being obedient and you're speaking the, that impromptu word coming from the Lord, that's your gospel. You're just moving in that, that constant, bubbling of the spring of life, those the water flowing from the Spirit of God, and your words are coming out from the Holy Spirit, it touches the lives of people. And we were doing that. Um, and I was sent down there to speak the prophetic word of God over my city, and I did that. But there was this one woman, she was demon-possessed, and she would start screaming at the top of her lungs and howling like a wild animal, and you could tell she was demon-possessed. And so I go, Lord, what do you want me to do? I don't have a deliver. I mean, I do have a deliverance ministry. In Christ, we all do work in him that's deliverance. But he had not sent me into the city to be down there delivering people. He had sent me down there to speak his word, his prophetic word. And I said, what do you want me to do? Because, and I was a willing servant. If he had wanted me to go over there and start binding up devils and casting them out, I would have done that. I mean, I was willing to do whatever he showed me to do. And he said, you just speak in my name. You tell that thing to be quiet and it will be, it will obey you. And he says, you don't have to speak it loud enough for it to hear you. Just speak it under your breath in my name. I would do that. And she would immediately, I would go, in the name of Jesus, be still, be, be calm, be quiet. And, and it, it would, she would sit down and get quiet. And it was like night and day. It was like night, she'd get quiet. And we'd go give her a sandwich and a banana or whatever we had. And um, we were always offering prayer. But, you know, it was enough just to have her be still while we ministered to all the other homeless people and did what God wanted us to do. But um, there's so there's power in his name and authority in his name, and he's, he brings forth a rule and a dominion through his name. And do you want me to get into that thing about Michael? I was praying about Second Thessalonians, about the return of the Lord. And what restrains the Antichrist from his appearance. I've never felt right about it. People think, oh, well, that's the church. And it may be. But what I was getting, I, I started, I just kept saying, what is this that's holding back? And he gave me a vision. And I could see this really big archangel in heaven. And I could see war in heaven. And I could see that the light and the forces of light and the angelic works of God were overtaking the 
the de demons, you know, these powers and principalities in heaven, in the heavenly places. And then I knew this is about the people of God. This is over the earth and the people of God. And then I knew it was Michael. And what kept coming to me was that Satan would fall from his place in heaven. Well, I looked it up in the book of Revelation, and sure enough, um, Michael, there's war in heaven, and the enemy is cast down. And that will, that you know, we know that there's a man that gets shot in the head, or a bullet or a sword comes, you know, pierces him. A, a little, a little sword pierces him, and you know he's resuscitated or whatever. But the enemy pretty much just kind of takes that person and makes them into his antichrist, and it's going to be really bad. But um, I, I've said enough. But I don't, I don't know exactly how all of what the prophets are saying is going to play out. The most important thing is to be watchful, to be like the virgin with your oil and your lamp lit, just flowing in the spirit and moving in the spirit and being subject to the Lord and abiding in the vine and being his hands and his feet and his countenance and his voice and magnifying Christ through everything you do around you. And that's pretty much being ready. But um, God bless you. Lord, I just pray right now that this be a blessing to many. And uh, there's one more topic he's going to have me do another part to, and then that'll be it. I hope this is good for you. Bye.